This is another story from my friend, the church custodian, and from the church that we both attend. My friend David and I were at his graduation party, and we were telling one of his other friends about some of the strange things that go on at our church. David's friend didn't really believe the stories, so we decided to take him to the church that night when we knew that nobody else would be there. We get to the church around 9 p.m., unlock the doors, and go in. All the lights are off, so we're going room to room, turning them on as we go. Almost immediately, we all hear footsteps on the floor above us. We finish going through the first floor, and as we're ascending the stairs, we hear the footsteps come to the top of the stairs, which is around a landing halfway up the staircase. In the window on the landing, we can clearly see an outline of what looks like a person. At this point, our friend had decided that he'd gotten enough proof to believe our stories and was ready to leave. We're standing in the parking lot, facing the door, arguing over who's going to have to go back in and turn all the lights off, when all of a sudden there are three very distinct taps on the nursery window. The nursery is on the second floor, and on the side of the building that we were facing. That made the decision about turning the lights out a little bit harder. Fun fact about the nursery. Once we got back to David's house, we were telling his mom, who's the actual custodian for the church, about what had happened. And she told us that she hated having to go into the nursery while she was alone due to the feelings she got in there. She also said that the old wooden rocking chair that was in there would almost always be rocking when she went in to clean. So she would go clean something else and wait for whoever was in the rocking chair to finish up. This is one of my many experiences at St. Thomas Church. This one was about eight years ago. Probably not that scary compared to other things that I've experienced, but it was the first one that popped into my head. I went to a graveyard that had a church with four of my friends. One of my friends knew about it as he had come once before. The rest of us had never been. Now, my intention was to go there to see if I could genuinely talk to any spirits because of past experiences. Two of my friends, however, were the usual let's have a laugh and mock the dead type, while the other two were shitting themselves, as you do. We walked around for about 15 minutes and I was asking questions like, is anyone here that wants to talk? But it was hard with my two friends acting like idiots. So I just thought, okay, this is silly. I'll just stop. Now, just to be clear, two of the cars we took were right next to each other, about half a meter apart, with the big gates to the right of the cars, which is where you enter straight into the graveyard. We walked back to the cars, and I leaned against one car, and one friend next to me, on my left, and the other three leaned against the other car. Now we're all facing each other, just talking, when suddenly from the right of us, we hear this voice, almost like a child's voice, say, help me. I am not kidding. My friends and I all looked right in the same direction at the same time. All of our heads just turned, and we all went silent, giving each other that look like, what's going on? I said quietly to all of them, you heard that, right? Their faces said it all. Then about 30 seconds later, we heard it again. Help me. But it was a little bit fainter. My friends started to panic, and I was a little scared, but more curious. They opened their car door so fast it wasn't funny. I don't blame them. I hopped in the back of my mate's car, the one that I was leaning on, and her car wouldn't start straight away. I looked out the window, and my two mates in the other car had already sped off. I was trying to calm my friends down, who I was in the car with, but after about a minute the car started, and my friend who was driving sped off screaming, I'm never coming back here again, while my friend in the passenger seat agreed. 
When we were off the road that leads to the graveyard, she slowed down, and I pulled my phone out to see if I could find anything about this graveyard, as I had never been before. I found out that there were two young twin brothers who used to play around there at the church, and attend with their family. One day they were playing and tried to play a prank. Something went wrong, and they both caught fire and burned to death. I swear that voice we heard sounded exactly like a young boy's voice. It creeped me out. I told my friends and they agreed. They also said that they would never go back there, and I can't blame them. Personally, I've been back four times now, and something has happened every time. So, my church is haunted, but there are areas that one might consider a hot spot. These areas are the first floor men's bathroom, the bridal room, and the baptistry, which is connected to the third floor bathrooms. After years of being the custodian's son and part-time custodian, my friend has experienced pretty much all the notable spirits and ghosts that are in the church. One of these spirits is little more than a mild inconvenience, due to the fact that it likes to throw a wet paper towel into an otherwise clean hallway. My friend had told me about this spirit's antics before the story I'm about to tell you occurred. My friend and I were around 16 when this happened. My friend was playing basketball with two other friends from church one day during summer break. This was midday, so there was no one else at the church, and the church remained locked until we decided to go in. Being the custodian's son, my friend had the key. While taking a break from playing, all three of my friends swore that they saw the blinds in one of the windows on the third floor move like someone had brushed their hand from top to bottom. Me, not being a big basketball person, was not at the church to witness this part. Immediately after they saw the blinds move, they called me to tell me that they were going to go inside to investigate if I would be interested in joining them. I was. I arrived a few minutes later and went inside. Obviously, being an old building, the church has a tendency to make noises, but some of these were very distinguishable footsteps. One of my buddies put his phone on the voice recorder and he sits it in the first pew of the sanctuary while we're wandering about the rest of the building, hoping to record some of the noises we keep hearing. We place the phone down and head to the third floor. Nothing paranormal occurs on our first pass, but for some reason we decide to take the exact same path we had just taken over and over. On our second go-round is when we noticed something strange. There's a broom propped up in the doorway of the men's bathroom on the third floor. This broom was without a doubt not there on our first pass. We don't think much of this until our third trek, which is when we notice that the broom is still in the doorway, but in a different position. The thing about it was that the broom had not slid out at the bottom, but had been stood up. We continued on this path maybe three to four more times. Each time, the broom had been moved to a different position in the same doorway. We decided that it's been long enough, so we go to check on the phone that my buddy had put in the sanctuary. We all go in and begin listening to the recording, when we finally realized how stupid of an idea it was, because there was no way to tell what was us and what wasn't. That is, until we hear a loud tap that was coming from just a few pews behind the phone. The tapping gets closer, and then one more tap even closer. Finally, we hear a triple tap on the screen of the phone. After listening to the recording, we decided to check on the broom one more time. As we reached the third floor, there are two very obvious things that have changed. One. The broom is now in a different doorway altogether, and two, there's a wet paper towel laying in the middle of the hallway in front of the men's restroom. My friend claims to have seen a reflection that wasn't ours in the window across the hall from us, 
and that's when we decided that we were done ghost hunting for the day. A couple of years later, one of my buddies is helping his dad, who's a plumber, renovate one of the bathrooms in the church. As they're headed to the bathroom, my buddy spots a familiar sight. In the middle of the hallway is a wet paper towel. My friend is a church custodian, and he's told me a lot of paranormal stories. While I was talking to him about an experience we had, I realized that I had seen an embodiment of one of the spirits from our church, something I had previously thought that I hadn't experienced. I saw it when I was very young, so I never put it together, until I was talking to my friend about something he had seen. He was talking about the time we'd been lured into the church by a dark figure in the window, which proceeded to lead us on a wild goose chase through the church. He described the figure he had seen as an average-sized male with no features, just all black. After hearing this, I remembered a time where I was waiting on my parents, who were talking to some people after evening service. Mostly everybody had gone home at this point, and the lights were all turned off on every floor except the ground floor. Being the adventurous little kid I was, and not really believing in ghosts at the time, I decided to go to the third floor, with all the lights off. As I rounded the steps to the third floor, I saw, thanks to the light in the parking lot coming through the window, the silhouette of an all-black man. The entire shadow was black and I couldn't make out any features. I immediately ran back to my parents and told them, but as any good Baptist parents would do, they told me it was just somebody from the church. This occurred in the same spot that my friend said he had seen the figure. When I was in high school in the 80s, there was this story about a local church in the country, long abandoned, that there were satanic gatherings every Sunday at midnight. The front door was painted red. There was a long dirt drive to the right of the church that led to an abandoned farmhouse. Legend had it that the farmer had killed his entire family one night. So an old stone church, no parking lot, cemetery directly in front of the church, and the dirt path on the right leading to the farm three miles away, on an unlit blacktop five miles away from any houses or main roads. I was 17 and my friends were 18. It was the summer after graduation. My friend Darla and I were driving around with her annoying friend Betsy who was sitting in the back seat. I was driving Darla's car and she was the passenger. It was around 11.30 p.m. when Darla and I decided that we should drive to the church just to see if the stories were true. Betsy freaked out in the back seat the entire way, and being young and immature, I wanted to either smack her or laugh the entire way there. Around 11.50, I pulled up and decided to scare Betsy by pulling onto the dirt lane. I was about a quarter of a mile in. Betsy freaked out. I was laughing. Darla was high. Two minutes later, I kid you not, a station wagon pulls into the drive behind us. At 11.53, on a Sunday night, it was two elderly people, around 80 years old, dressed in their Sunday best, both frail and white-haired. They stayed, and we discussed. Betsy said, oh my gosh, get us out of here. I said, there's no way out except backward. I wasn't going any further down the drive, and there was a cemetery to my left, a stone church at the upper left, and a thatch of trees to my right. We were effectively trapped. Darla said, do you think they're devil worshippers? No, I said, they're too old. Betsy screamed, haven't you seen Rosemary's baby? They were old. I'm trying to stay calm when another car pulls behind the station wagon. 
It's now 11.57 p.m. It's a brown Dodge. A young kid gets out, walks up to the old couple, and talks to them for a while. Okay, they know each other. Now I'm getting freaked out. I call out to the old man, Can you please back up? Can you ask the guy behind you two? We'd like to leave. Thank you. Darla says the kid came to my window and threatened to stab me with a knife that he showed me. I don't remember that. The old man unleashed a torrent of curse words that I still don't understand. He called me all kinds of derogatory names, everything you can think of, telling me he didn't know the kid, so he couldn't be rude and ask the guy to move. His wife just sat there. I yelled, yes you do know him, he just walked up to your car and talked to you. Then suddenly they both left. I peeled out and took off down the road. I didn't see their cars or lights and it's a fairly straight road. 20 seconds later, the kid jumps out of the bushes on the side of the road, right in front of the car. We screamed, I swerved, and we never went there again. Looking back, Darla and I must have been traumatized. I don't remember peeling backwards and getting us out of there. She doesn't remember the kid jumping in front of my car, and I don't remember the kid coming to my window with a knife. But between all of us in the car, we put the story together. Needless to say, it was the most bizarre and scary moment of my life. Back in 2018, I met a sweet girl at my church. I'm going to call her Lily for the sake of this story, as I don't want to reveal her personal information. We became pretty good friends. We would sit with each other or nearby every service. We attended canned food drives to help others around Thanksgiving. And we sat together with a few older couples at church during lunches. But outside of being close church friends, we weren't really that close outside of that context. At one point, we had each other's Snapchats before I deleted it. The week before my birthday, I went to church as normal, ate breakfast with another friend of mine and her kids, and I made my way to the sanctuary. I saw Lily sitting on the right-hand side of the aisle, and I sat next to her. We talked for a bit, and then service began. However, halfway through, she got a phone call and left the church. She didn't come back, so I figured that maybe she had a family emergency or had to go to work early. I finished up at church, talked to my pastor and his family, and I headed home to give a couple piano lessons. Nothing else odd or weird crossed my mind, though. I just carried on with my week until next Sunday. The following Sunday was my birthday. I was excited because it was my golden birthday, the year of 25. I don't usually like celebrating my birthday, but this was going to be a good one. I'm a newlywed, spending the day with my husband, having my favorite coconut cream pie instead of cake. I still wanted to go to church that morning though. I love my church and church family and spending time with them. From the minute the church doors opened, everything was off. I walked down to the basement and had a cup of cold coffee, a bagel, and I noticed a few people around me were just pale, cold. I can't even properly describe the sadness on their faces. I'm a pretty introverted person, so I didn't ask any questions. I just went back upstairs to the sanctuary and waited for the service to start. My pastor walked up to the podium with tears in his eyes. He began to tell us about how there was a tragedy within the church. Lily had taken her own life the weekend prior, Friday night to be specific. I started crying uncontrollably. I had no idea she was dealing with that, and I felt like an awful friend. We had a beautiful service dedicated to her before her funeral. We all sang songs that she loved, prayed for her mother and family, and prayed for her. I left right after church, and I went straight home. I didn't think about the details of her death because it was just too much. 
A few hours later, though, I remembered the Sunday before I saw her at church. How is that possible, though? She passed away Friday night, but I somehow saw her on Sunday. I sat right next to her. I had a conversation with her before services. I watched her answer her phone and walk out. I became angry, scared, disappointed, depressed. Every emotion that comes with losing a friend at such a young age. I fell into a hole. After I had grieved and prayed for a couple of days, something came to me. My church does live streams, and there would be a clear view of our service and us sitting next to each other. I logged on to my Facebook, found my church's page, and started searching for the date that I had last seen her. The strangest part of everything is that every live stream is in chronological order, so I figured it would be pretty easy to find, but to this day, I still haven't found it. I asked the person in charge of recording and uploading the sermons on Facebook where it was, and he said that somehow there were technical difficulties that day, and they were unable to stream the service or even capture any of the audio. I've racked my brain for months. To this day, I feel as if she was at church Sunday to say goodbye to me. I asked other members if they had seen her the week before, and all have said that they couldn't remember if they had, or they'll just correct me, saying, Honey, she passed away last Friday night. There's no way she would have been here. My church is fairly small, and we only have a morning Sunday service, so there's no possible way that I could have gotten the days mixed up. I've had many ghost encounters in my life, way too many to count. But this one hits the hardest. I wish I had more answers than I do, or some kind of proof, but I don't. I didn't have any eerie feeling when I last talked to her. She didn't feel like a ghost or an apparition. It felt like every other time, like she was really there, without a doubt. I hope that one day I can find some answers, an explanation of some sort. But for now, I have to keep telling myself that this is how Lily decided to say goodbye to me, and I have to learn to be okay with that. A few friends and I decided to book a small getaway up north for a week or so. We settled on a lovely converted church in the middle of nowhere, next to a small river near the sea. After a couple hours of driving to the place, we finally arrived and were faced with this small converted old church. It was beautiful, and we were sure we were going to have a great time. We opened the door and started to settle in. There was a log stove in the corner, and with it being September in Scotland, it was kind of chilly. I made sure that it was lit consistently. We cracked open some drinks and put on some music. Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast to be exact, but we never thought of the connection to the church. So we had our drinks and a great night. I had fallen asleep on the sofa. And I woke up through the night, but had this strange feeling of somebody watching me. I shrugged it off, thinking that it was just because of the strange surroundings, and that I was probably just uncomfortable in a new place. The next morning I woke up and decided to do all the dishes. While I was washing up, my friend came through and sat on the sofa. I had a dinner plate and a side plate in my hands, and turned around to put them on the counter. As I turned away, I saw the plates slide along the counter and nearly fall off. As you would expect, I grabbed them, but as I did, I felt some kind of energy push back at me. It was the weirdest feeling, kind of like being electrocuted but without the pain. I dropped the plates and stepped back in panic as my friend said, Are you okay? I just said, Yeah, I'm fine because I didn't want to seem silly. What I realized, though, after it happened, was that I was wearing a Black Sabbath t-shirt. Most of the things that happened seemed to happen in connection with that band or something similar. My other friend came through then and remarked how cold it was in the room, 
which was strange because, as I mentioned before, I had the log burner stove going all the time. Again, I said nothing. A few days passed, and on the last night, my friend was tidying up as we were all in bed. We heard footsteps upstairs, but we thought it was just him, until we realized that he was washing dishes and hadn't been upstairs all night. It was a crazy week, and some other things happened, but those were the most serious. <laughs>